Hello humans, my name is Kei Oya Overlord and Happy New Year everybody. I hope you had a good holiday because today we're going to be talking about probably the best stable diffusion model to date. Now again, I was supposed to make a video about the best stable diffusion models and the best embeddings and this video will be coming soon but I think that this particular model deserves a video on its own because the kind of images that you can get with this model are absolutely godly and I'm not even kidding. They are absolutely fantastic. So in this video I will be showcasing the special stable diffusion model called Protogen. Now Protogen are actually two different models, Protogen V2.2 and Protogen X3.4. And although they are very similar, there are still a little bit of differences between the two models. And I will compare them both in this video. So before I explain why the Protogen model is so special, let's actually install it on our own computer first. So to install the Protogen models, you're gonna click the links in the description down below. You're gonna arrive on cvitai.com and then you're gonna have two different options to download the model. The first one is the CKPT file that you all know and love and the second one is the safe tensor format. Now I haven't talked about the safe tensor format before but it's basically a model file without the ability to run malicious code on your system. If you remember my previous video on the subject, I explained that every single model that you find online that are in the CKPT format, these models are are not safe 100%. These models could contain malicious code that could run on your computer when you launch them with stable diffusion. But the newest safe tensor format cannot do that. They cannot run malicious codes on your computer, making them 100% safe to download. So whenever you have the choice to choose between downloading the CKPT file or a safe tensor file, always choose the safe tensor format. This way you are sure that your computer and your data are completely safe. So on Civit AI, if you want to download the safe tensor format file, all you have to do is just click here, other downloads, and then click on model safe tensor. And this will download the model onto your computer. And of course, do the same with the Protogen 3.4. And then of course, once you have downloaded the two models onto your computer, you're gonna select them, Ctrl X to cut them, go to your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, Models, Stable Diffusion, and then you're gonna paste these two models right here, exactly as if they were .ckpt files, and then go back and launch Stable Diffusion. And then of course, right here in the Stable Diffusion checkpoint, you can select the checkpoint that you want to use. Now then, what makes these models so good? Why do they produce such amazing results? Well, the Protogen model is basically a bunch of different models mixed in all together to create one amazing model. And you can see here the list of all the models used to create the Protogen model. F22, Elder FS Lucid Mix, Asim Blend, Sick Art Mega, and Model Shoot. All of these models were blended together to create Protogen. Now what's really funny is that pretty much all of these models are themselves a mix of different other models. So the Protogen model is basically a mix of a mix of a mix. And it kinda created this happy little accident. And for the Protogen X 3.4, it is basically the Protogen 2.2, but with 5% of Robo Diffusion, Open Journey, Analog Diffusion and RPG V2 Beta which basically make it super similar to the Protogen V2.2, but this one allows you to do different things, such as creating robots or better fantasy characters. So then, what are the differences between the two models then? Well, if you look at them side by side, you can see that the Protogen 2.2 creates more artistic, almost digital paint-like images compared to Protogen 3.4, which creates more photorealistic images. They are very, very similar. You can see that this is basically the same model because the same seed was used here and it creates like this character in the same exact position, in the same exact environment. But you can see that here for the Protogen 3.4, the face is a little bit more photorealistic compared to the 2.2, which basically looks like a very, very beautiful digital art image. But don't worry because in both cases, you will always get an absolutely fantastic image. Also, if you want to have access to these prompts, the link to the Mirrorborn will be in the description down below. Now, the second question that you might ask yourself is, are those models compatible with embeddings? If you remember my previous video on the subject, I showed you that with the newest 2.1 version of Stable Diffusion, embeddings play a huge part in creating absolutely fantastic images, and that you absolutely need to use them. 
Now, do embeddings work with this model? The answer is yes, but not the ones that I presented in my previous video. And the reason why is, well, if you look at this image, for example, which is basically a mix between Emma Watson and Emma Stone, you can see that they look a lot like the celebrity, right? Which is not something that was possible with the 2.1. And the reason why it works here is very simple. It's because the protogen model is based on the 1.5 model of stable diffusion. Which not only means that all the celebrities and art styles are inside of that model already, but that also means that the embeddings that I presented you in the previous video, trained on the 2.0 version of stable diffusion, will not work on that particular model. Meaning that if you want to use embeddings with the protogen models, you need to use embeddings trained on the 1.5 version of stable diffusion. Here's for example an embedding called Empire Style that was trained on the 1.5 version of stable diffusion. And another one called Psycho Style that was also trained on the 1.5. So if you want to use the embedding, all you have to do is just click on this button right here to download it on your own computer. Same with the Psycho Style. Once you have the two PT file embeddings, you're gonna select them, Ctrl X to cut them, go into your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, Embeddings, and you're gonna paste them right here. And then to be able to use them in Stable Diffusion, all you have to do is just copy and paste the trigger words. So in this case, for example, is style-empire, and then you're gonna paste them in the prompt box, and then click on Generate. And as you can see, we have now a brand new image with the Protogen model using that Empire style embedding. And the results are absolutely fantastic. I mean, look at that. This is amazing. So as you can see, this is the before and this is the after. Without the embedding and with the embedding. And of course, you can do the same with the Psycho style. Just come in here, copy the style Psycho trigger words, and then paste it in the prompt box. And then click Generate. And this is the final result. Looks definitely very interesting. But I'm definitely more a fan of the Empire style embedding. And you can of course use these embeddings on both the 2.2 and the 3.4. Although something that is very interesting, in the 3.4 you often get a lot more landscapes compared to the 2.2. I'm not quite sure why, but I'm definitely not complaining because the images that you get are absolutely fantastic. Now, if you want to use these models, here's a few tips and tricks that you can use. First, if you use the tag model shoot style, you can center the image on the subject. Now, to be honest, in reality, most of the images that you're gonna generate with these models will already be centered on the subject by default. But if it's not centered, you can use these model shoot style tag to force it to center it. And if the subject is already centered, it will just create a very similar looking image but with just a few different details. Now the second thing that you can use is the camera prompt and the movement control. So if you want your subject to be taken from a different angle, you can use these commands in your prompt to change where the photo is taken from. So for example, if you use the argument from side, you're gonna see that here you're gonna force the image to be taken from the side of the character. If you ask from above, it will generate an image as if this was a photo taken from above. You can even add some movement control, such as hand on hip, sitting, etc. And you can even combine the camera prompt with the movement control. So for example, if you take from above and sitting, you're of course gonna have images generated as if this was a photo taken from above with the character sitting. So this is really, really super cool and super powerful. Now here's my second tip for you, since this is a model that was trained on the 1.5, a higher step value will actually provide a better image. So you can see here, for example, no matter what sampler you use, if you use more steps for your image, you're gonna have better results. It's gonna be more precise, with more details, and the final image will just be more beautiful. But I don't think that there is any need to go above 50 steps. You can do it of course if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer, but definitely a higher step value for these models really go a long way. And you can see that for some sampler, the difference is very, very big. With 20 steps, 30 steps, 40 steps and 50 steps, the difference is huge. So yeah, my advice to you, just use 50 steps to have the best results. And this advice also applies if you use embeddings. This is pretty much the exact same thing. You're gonna have way more details and the final image will be way, way better. Now, when it comes to the CFG scale and the sampler, they're pretty much all good, except LMS, DPM2A, 
DPM fast, LMS Keras, that becomes very weird after 12 CFG scale, and then PNMS, which also becomes weird after 15 CFG scale. But pretty much all the other samplers work really, really well. And for me, if I had to choose the perfect CFG scale, I think the sweet spot lies between 10 and 12, which is where you get the best colors, the best contrast, compared to the other CFG scales. But again, if you're not sure which one you want to use, you can refer to this table to see which one is the best for you. Now the last tip that I have for you is that you need to be careful with the restore face option. Because this model is already so good at making absolutely beautiful faces that using the restore face option can actually worsen the quality of the picture. But this heavily depends on where your subject is. So for example, if it produces a close-up image of your subject, you should definitely not use the restore face option because it will make the final image blurry and just worse in general. You will lose a lot of details, as you can see in this example right here. However, if your subject is far away from the camera and the face is far away from the camera, using the restore face option actually makes the image way, way better, which allows you to get rid of the few artifacts created with the model. And as you can see right here in these two images, the difference is pretty huge. And of course, the same advice applies to the 3.4 version. But also, be careful that if you are trying to generate celebrities, very often the restore face option will make them almost unrecognizable. So again, be very careful using that option, even with the other models of Stable Diffusion. Now, one thing that the Protogen model does exceptionally well is the image-to-image -image option. As you can see here, this is an image that I imported from Midjourney that I tried to convert it into another image using the Protogen model, and we got this kind of absolutely beautiful images. And if I generate one more, you will see that it will always create an absolutely beautiful image. Now, the parameters that I used for this is using the 1020 by 1020 resolution, 50 for the sampling steps, 12 for the CFG scale, and 0.6 for the denoising strength. Now, one thing that I did not say before is that using negative prompts greatly affect the final results. For example, if I take them away and I click on generate, you will see that the final result is not as good as the one we had before. So definitely use a lot of negative prompts to get absolutely beautiful images, or else you can get images like these. And all the links for the negative prompts will be in the description down below, and they will be all present in the mirror board. And as you can see, back again with the negative prompts, we get absolutely fantastic images. This model is so powerful, it is absolutely fantastic. And finally, the last question that I'm sure a lot of people will be asking me in the comments down below, and that is, can you use this model to train your own face using your own images? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Here's an example of a user on Reddit called Digital John that trained his own face using his own images with the Protogen 3.4 model as a base. And as you can see here, the results are absolutely fantastic. These are absolutely gorgeous images. So the answer is of course, yes, you can use that model as a base to train your own face over it. And talking about Dreambooth and embedding, I will soon be making a special video about that subject. So if for some reason you're still not subscribed to my channel, I mean, come on now, this is time to subscribe. Because it will be absolutely awesome. And there you have it folks, the Protogen models are absolutely fantastic. I think this is one of the best models ever created. And I personally had a blast playing with it these last few days. And I'm sure that you will too. Also, completely shameless plug, but I just released my first video on how I got monetized in under two weeks on YouTube on my secondary channel called The Maker Lair. So if you're interested in that, the link for this video will be in the description down below. And there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.